that should be honest. And then when it's honest, then you put something that is really genuine out in the world mm -hmm. and people can react to it. Hi, my name is Dasha Pierce and you are listening to my Inspiration in Action podcast. The goal of this podcast is to allow you to be inspired by and learn from other creators, their process, where they get their ideas from and how they make a living and view the world. Today I have a question for you. Can an Instagrammer snapping shots just for fun become an internationally recognized photographer with exhibitions in multiple countries? The answer is yes, and today's guest is a living proof of it. Valentina Lofredo, also known as That's Val on Instagram, is a mother of two who started her Instagram account six years ago as a way to find some free time from her busy family life. Her little hobby experiment quickly brought her international acclaim and now she no longer views her herself as an ordinary Instagrammer but as a full-fledged conceptual and fine art photographer planning the opening of her next solo exhibition in Italy and the publication of her new photography book soon after. We talk about why art should be honest, how to talk to portfolio reviewers and why it's important to watch TED Talks. Please welcome Valentina Lofredo. Hi, Valentina. Hello. Hi, it's so nice to see you. Hi, Dasha. And thank, thank you for the introduction and for inviting me. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this with me and to answer some of my questions. I'm really excited to have you because I've, I've been following you for I don't know how long already. And your work is really something to actually look at and reflect on. And that's what I love about photography. Thank you. <laughs> yes. And... I have lots and lots of questions of my own. I don't know if we've been, if we'll be able to cover all of them, but I also have some of the questions from the audience. They were sent some questions beforehand, so maybe we can get to those too. So, but I would like to start with maybe a little bit of introduction. Tell us about how you got into photography, first of all. Okay, yes. So it was around six years ago. I had two small kids mm -hmm. and, and like in the last, in the previous two years, I didn't. I moved from Hong Kong where I was working to Italy and then to Shanghai and then back to Hong Kong. And I was, most of the time I was pregnant and then I had two small kids. How old are they? So now they are 10 and uh, 8. Okay. And uh, at that time I was very involved with them, so I actually needed some space for myself. That's how it all started. And I watched this TED talk about that is called uh, "Try Something New for 30 Days." I found it was brilliant the idea because so the idea is to, to if you have something that you thought you wanted to do, just to try it for only for 30 days, and you have to do it like every day, just a little bit every day. So it was something without ex expectation, something that you don't really to, need to plan, you just do it. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know, something that you can do like in 30 minutes every day. So even if you don't have time during the day before going to bed, you, you can always find, you know, like those 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. So I, did, I was not really interested in photography before, but I tried different things with this idea, running or drawing, okay. uh, making a drawing a day or, I don't know, reading biographies. So I was doing this kind of things just to, you know, to do something for myself. After a couple of months, I tried with the photography, like mm -hmm. taking, I wanted to connect photography and social networks because, you know, they were a thing, you know, I wanted to be up to the time. <laughs> so I was taking a picture a day and um, posting it on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I created this account that was only called That's Val without any, you know, reference to myself. And, you know, not my family, friends, they would not know about, about this. So I was really, you know, free to do whatever I wanted, even silly things. And I would not feel, you know, like the judgment, not that they would judge, but, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, I get nervous. So yeah, many it was, uh, it's very normal. Yeah, it, so it was really a platform where I could just have fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, I discovered so many people doing great things, great photographs, and I got inspired. So it was really, I was not there for the approval or for anything. 
just to have fun. But then when I got that, when I got the feedback, it was really motivating to go on and to mm -hmm. experiment more. So it was, uh, that's how it started. All right. Yeah, that's actually a very inspiring story. I had no ambitions at all to make it something more than just a game. I think like that for a couple of years. Then when my youngest was, you know, going to, we started going to school full time then I could, I thought, okay, that's maybe, that's my shot. I can try and see how it goes. Mm -hmm. So I started switching and thinking as I did as a career. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. I also have two kids, so I totally understand what is to get some free time from them. It's like, you know. Yes. I'm <laughs> definitely. Yeah, I've seen the pictures. You have daughters, right? Yes, I have two daughters. <laughs> you have two daughters, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I'm really wondering, do you now mix your family life and your art life or do you involve your kids into your photography or do you prefer to keep them completely separate i don't really try to keep them separate but uh, i mostly work in uh, when they are at school mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. they don't get to see much but they would say that they are very involved because <laughs> For them, even posing for a picture is a big deal. But yeah. most of the time I work when they are at school. And then I would like them to be involved. Like, and sometimes they give me ideas. They give me ideas all the time, but just without, with no intention to. It's refreshing the way they think and the way they play. So it's, uh, and sometimes they do it on purpose. Like, they, oh, I thought about this, we can do this and make it seems like it's like that. <laughs> so it's. I like when they feel involved, but oh. it's, uh, you know, it's a, in a very natural way. We do it in a very natural way. I don't decide. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I just recently started involving my elder daughter and it looks like she can really be a good model and she actually wants to help me a lot. She can hold the reflector and hold, help me on stuff. Oh, that's great. I think that I can teach her, so it's going to be kind of interesting even... Yeah. How old is her eldest? She's eight. Ah, okay. Wow. I thought she was older. Oh, yeah. very good. <laughs> yeah, but she, she was helping me like, actually this past Monday during the shoot. She was modeling an editorial for an Italian kids fashion magazine and she was also helping me like with reflectors and yeah, like wow, it works somehow. I always That's... try to keep them kind of a bit further away of, from my photography life. But, oh my god, it works. Oh, it's good. I wish maybe later on because now they are a bit hesitant not to give me ideas but to pose for me. Mm -hmm. So I yeah. don't you know, I do it, but I don't take pictures very often, so it's mm -hmm. okay. They will do it once I ask, but they're not too, they're a bit embarrassed. But I hope one day, yes, I can teach them how to do things. I think maybe it's also different a bit between boys and girls. For boys and girls, it's a bit different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to ask you how, well, you, of course, started as an Instagrammer, and also I can see how your work progressed, and it was very kind of light and happy in the very beginning and then it gradually became a bit more not even a bit but a lot more conceptual and deep and thought-provoking how did that trans transition happen for you tell us about that yes at the beginning i was just taking one single picture at a time mm -hmm. and i like to take even now to take pictures that are playful and that are colorful and it's uh, so this is still uh, true maybe i don't post so much but mm -hmm. i that's still well, my way of looking like at the world with my camera not i mean i try to find something that makes me smile or that makes me think about something but uh, lately yes i've worked on projects that are not like it's many pictures i mean not many but a series of pictures mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, yeah there is one it's a little bit uh, stillness that it's a little bit more deeper like, because it, I mean, it's a feeling that I wanted to display that is that I had very like real and vivid in my mind that I thought it would be interesting to convey it through pictures. Mm -hmm. And it's when you feel that like you have maybe it can be a traumatic thing, but can also be a bad news, something unexpected that that makes you feel like your world is falling apart. Mm -hmm. And that feeling of stillness when you are alone with yourself and that it makes you just stop and rebuild from yourself. Yeah. So that was the uh, stillness came as a puzzle. As many projects that I do, they are like, they come up as a puzzle of different elements. And mm -hmm. one was, so you can, I think when you see the series, it's a little bit uh, more thought provoking than the others. 
And apart from that one, I think the others are still, uh, you know, on the border between playful and mm -hmm. deeper. Which direction do you want to go at the moment? Do you want to go with more conceptual imagery or do you want to stay in this uh, borderline between playful and conceptual? So I like conceptual, but mm -hmm. I don't think that conceptual has to be said. I would like to keep shooting more conceptual things. I think, you know, play can be one of these things that are maybe conceptual photography. People might think that has to be related with some very important social issues or I don't know. This... Not necessarily. I think, well, social issues like traumatic experience is a social issue. It's very personal and deep, but still there are so many people who are going through this. So... Yeah, I think I'm not deciding, planning what direction I want to be, mm -hmm. but I think I like to work with projects and that can be around something playful or they can be around something like more personal or uh, more aesthetics. Mm -hmm. I'm not really limiting myself with, mm -hmm. uh, with something. With with some particular topic okay i get it yeah but currently i think that that's really really important when you especially when an artist has some emotion like deep inside and when an artist lets um, like lets this emotion get into the work that's when mm -hmm. the magic happens basically that's when the art like the piece of art becomes something that impacts other people. And I think that's probably the goal of the whole art thing. <laughs> yeah. so For sure, I think, yes, art and uh, should be honest. Mm -hmm. um, and then when it's honest, then you put something that is really genuine out, out in the world mm -hmm. and people can react to it. And yes, if it's something about personal experience, mm -hmm. then it's emotions is something yeah i love the word honest this is such a good word about art yes it's so 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 true what's a bit about your process so uh, that one particular series the stillness one it was um you kind of had the story behind it and you wanted to project it and then what about other like playful things do you start with a story as well or do you start with finding a location and then creating a story for it how how does it work for you? Uh, it's usually a mix of different inputs. So I'm, I'm, I'm always on the lookout for new ideas mm -hmm. um, or that come from everywhere, from sayings, from furniture, from anything. Maybe mm -hmm. something that intrigues me, I write it down on my own, or I make a drawing and I just keep it there. And then I don't try to say, okay, let's do from this, let's do something similar, mm -hmm. but I just keep it there and I collect, I keep collecting inputs and mm -hmm. somehow when more inputs come together, I have, you know, an idea. I mean, a real idea that I can uh, take a picture of. So for example, for stillness, I had this, it was not actually really a story. It's, it was a feeling that I thought it would be interesting to just express photographically. Mm -hmm. And then I had you know, this idea looking at the sea that, you know, the sea was always moving like life and then there are, you know, boats on it and then there are these buoys that I use, the orange elements that are um, not moving, they're more like stable. And then there is a bottom of the sea that is more, that is what holds everything together. It's like our essence. Mm -hmm. So it's our essence, the sea is like our life and then there are some elements that are more like points of references. And then I imagine what happens when there is a storm and sometimes, you know, the boys get washed on the beach and uh, you see this surreal because it happens also in Hong Kong when there are typhoons that the boys get washed on the sand. So you see this surreal landscape where um, there are all these boys scattered and they kind of lost their function because mm -hmm. they are and it's uh, and they are stuck because of course they, are, they, they should be in the sea, but they are in the sand. So that made me think about, you know, it would be a good place to shoot this series. A good mm -hmm. place to make some, you know, references. Uh, and then also I had, I saw a swimmer another, in a, in a few summers ago, swimming with a cup, the same colors of the boys. So, so I thought, oh, that is something like that I like. I always use also in my playful work. So all these things together and then all make sense. The mm -hmm. thing is that, it, you know, you don't have to know these things to see the, the pictures and you don't really need to uh, get all those things. But for me, it's important in the process that they are there. 
mm-hmm. and then people can just take whatever they you know they relate to mm-hmm. so yeah. it's always like that it's m- many many things together and uh, so the project comes yeah do you think that the stillness project is your most personal work uh, mm, i think they are all personal yeah I, i don't think that is the most maybe it's the most different from the way i live i work i don't think i will uh, keep doing you know maybe later on but i don't think i will keep doing something like stillness not even like my first work that is more playful one mm-hmm. i think it will probably change my style will be probably the same because that is very natural to me but mm-hmm. uh, maybe the topics like now i'm working on a series that i think it's on a, on a very interesting topic mm-hmm. uh, um, and it's quite uh it's about privacy in the mm-hmm. uh, digital era mm-hmm. uh, and yeah. i do it in a way that is very very playful so when you see the series i haven't, I haven't posted it yet okay. but when you see the series you are um the first impression should be that it's something pleasant and playful and uh, mm-hmm. you know uh, that tricks you into liking it mm-hmm. and then you know when you know about the subject that you feel like you have been fooled somehow because it, it has a dark side mm-hmm. and i think this is also very different from any other project that i've done before yeah um because it plays a lot with the reaction of the of the viewer okay. and also this series as um uh it's not finished yet that's why i haven't mm-hmm. uh, posted it's uh, it's not only photography it's more uh, there are installations street mm-hmm. interventions wow. so i'm also working with the uh, like small <laughs> small sculptures and uh do, do you make them yourself yes oh, yes, wow. yes it's simple ones i'm not trained but uh, i can do that yeah with well, uh, mm-hmm. That's really amazing and I think that I promote a lot of the idea of mixing different types of art into your work for example so many people are struggling like I I want to do this like I, I want to do multimedia or like I I I want to do video and I want to do photography what do I do you can actually try to like combine them It's like you do yeah, yeah. You, you're introducing sculpture into your photography and that's an amazing idea that's really really awesome <laughs> i think i mean i'm not i don't feel i am a photographer also because i'm not really uh technical with photography i it's mm-hmm. uh, um but the thing is that i have an idea and i just want to realize it and then when i when it's realized mm-hmm. i want to share it so this is the um, yeah I thought totally yeah, that can be realized in many things and if I be more if I was more uh, skillful with the other medium I would also try mm-hmm. so a little bit little I'm trying new but with simple things and trying new mediums yeah that's that's really interesting that so many photographers are in this fine art um, area they say that i'm not a, actually a photographer because i'm not technical and i could say the same about me because i'm like eh, who knows about what, how those cameras work and <laughs> yeah i know just my personal settings and when people ask me like which camera should i buy like, i don't know <laughs> I, nothing i but i think i know less than you <laughs> yeah because i also i mean i don't use flash i don't use um, reflectors i don't use all these things so also for for me what i do is just my personal projects i don't really do like commissions i don't do i've done very few but it because they really wanted something that i was already doing mm-hmm. uh, but otherwise uh, i am not uh, competent enough to you know to <laughs> yes yeah to do that kind of work it's not like you're not alone in this in fine art <laughs> there's really so many photographers who are say like we are not photographers even like if you maybe heard about brook shaden yes yes yeah so she says that no oh, no i'm not i'm not <laughs> i'm not like i hate photography i'm just like choosing it as a medium so it's already okay I'm uh, trying to Okay. <laughs> We're back. So, um I really want to 
I, there are so many directions to which I can take the conversation right now. But tell us about your typical day. How your day looks. Because you say that I'm working when the kids are at school. And yes. how often do you shoot? Tell us about that. So I don't sh shoot often. Uh, very little it's more um so i wake up very early <laughs> uh, and then the kids go to school at 7 30 so mm -hmm. i have the um, most of the day until they come back because they come back at four mm -hmm. to work on my things and it's always different i'm always working on some projects now i'm working on um, on a book it will be i, I will have um, um, there is a um, publishing house that will publish my first book soon I, probably before Christmas, uh, and it's about it's. I'm sorry, it's a photography book. It's a photography book. Yeah. Yes, okay. mm -hmm. and then um, uh, so sometimes yes, I work on these things now also for my new series. A lot of research on materials. I've tried so many things that didn't work because I wanted to have outdoor installations. So you need to try different things and see how they are. You know. Um, they can stand um, so I do that or uh, for this project I'm al already like uh, planning an exhibition mm -hmm. uh, where and I want at the same time to have the street installations done so I try to contact you know like uh, I'm even the subways <laughs> or uh, to have you know my my work there so it's uh, it's uh, uh, always different it's not something but like in this uh, in this uh, moment the project that i'm working on are yes this one and uh, and for this project i'm also doing a dummy book an artist mm -hmm. book so i'm we are doing some uh, and this i'm doing it by myself so mm -hmm. i need to source all the materials and see i have an idea for the cover that is not very easy to realize so i need to you know to speak with somebody that yeah it's mostly that and then for the series that for my projects i it's a lot of planning and some research if the subject is uh, like this uh, mm -hmm. the, and then the shooting is it happens in a very few mm -hmm. sessions how do you do your research um uh, on internet mostly internet mm -hmm. You just read about uh, for for this subject. See, I mean, the, uh, the um, like the privacy technology and how it's affecting our life. Like, for example, there is uh, the New York Times is doing uh, a report on this. That has been mm -hmm. uh, they started it months ago, and every day they have new articles, new research, and. Um, here we are in, in Hong Kong, that is in China, and uh, in, um, in China they also have uh, very delicate issues with this. Mm -hmm. So uh, there is a lot to research, but it's mostly internet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I am at my computer a lot. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so and then materials I need to try. I just try, and sometimes, uh, like last year, and now I'm starting again. I am doing. I have a studio that is kind of a residence program, a sort of residence program where um, in Hong Kong they allow me to use a studio and there I can, because I don't have a, my own studio, mm -hmm, as, mm -hmm. because I don't take so many pictures, so I don't need to have one. But uh, now with these ceramic things and also I'm trying other materials and other, um, I, I need a studio, so I will start in October to mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. and that I will be more like hands on. Yes. So you mentioned that you're planning an exhibition. How did you make that transition from just being an Instagrammer mm -hmm. to a photographer who has like exhibitions? Because I also had though that question from uh, from our followers. They were like wondering how how did that happen? So I just decided that I wanted to do that kind of career, and then uh, I um, I decided that I wanted to have my exhibition. And uh, at that time, uh, I thought I would um, manage everything by myself without a gallery. I was not looking for a partner, mm -hmm. and so I was I just wanted to rent a space for mm -hmm. a few days. Have an exhibition, see how it, how it goes. Mm -hmm. um, so I did that. I selected. I mean, it was quite uh, long to select the pieces that I wanted to to, to print and uh, you know the sizes. Uh, so I worked a lot on that. I worked, then I found uh, the, really the perfect location, um, and everything was 
set, mm -hmm. uh, the, day, the date of the exhibition, when I was introduced to a gallery to like my work. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, then we talked and they said, why don't we take this as a test and I will support you with, mm -hmm. uh, like with the production, mm -hmm. with everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, then, and then this is how we started. And actually it changed a lot, everything that I planned before, because, you know, once he told me, he told me that, you know, I could not do so many editions, I cannot do, I mean, for his, for his uh, market. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Was it in Hong Kong? That was in Hong Kong, but the mm -hmm. gallery is Italian. Mm -hmm, okay. So they, they, they know a little bit more, but they have, you know, um, if you want to place yourself in a certain um, place, uh, you need to follow some rules. So mm -hmm. I wanted to have more editions and to have a more approachable price. Mm -hmm. And they said, no, you should not. Uh, I mean, if, if you want to work with galleries, you should have less than 10 editions you have mm -hmm. one format is better it's easier mm -hmm. um, if you want to work with the uh, auction houses uh, they they consider the editions at a less than nine like unique kind of one of a kind even if it's still editions mm -hmm. so and this is something that we did because mm -hmm. then with him we also work with the auction house so it worked and the mm -hmm. exhibition went very well so uh, we, then we kept working. Mm -hmm. And this is the only, the only uh, gallery that I have, but they also have partners in Italy, so we have exhibited also elsewhere. Great. So, but originally it was sort of self-started. You were... Yes. Yeah. yeah, so... I thought I would do an exhibition and test Hong Kong mm -hmm. and then uh, see and maybe sell online. So mm -hmm. I had all uh, different uh, mm -hmm. ideas. Yeah, so... But you... actually, it's much better for me. I mean, everybody is different, but for me, it's much better to have somebody that is taking care of the business part. Of course. Uh, yeah, I, I think for many people it's like that, but it's also hard to find such a person. <laughs> but it's difficult because also for me, I would like to find more galleries. This is mm -hmm. one gallery, it's not enough. Mm -hmm. uh, even if it goes well, it's uh, mainly you sell during exhibitions, but then it's very quiet. Mm -hmm. So it's in, and it's, uh, I, I, it's difficult. That it came without me looking for it. And then uh, now that I'm looking, it's a little bit more difficult. Mm -hmm. Yes. Next time. Yes, and um, I spoke to my <clears throat> photographer friend. Her name is Patty Mar. I don't know, maybe you heard about her, but you should definitely check out her work if uh, if you haven't. She's in Canada, and she shared her experience of contacting galleries, and she says that she sent yeah. hundreds and hundreds of emails, and she yes. was so happy when they said like thank you for your email, but. Right now, we cannot accept you. I should like, <laughs> reply. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's I think it's uh, tough and it's a lot about uh, relationship. And it's probably best if you have your, you know, if you, if it's a person, it's not email uh, relationship. Yes, it's, yes. I mean, if you go to openings, so you have to be very, so this is something that I don't do to be very social and go to openings and uh, meet people, meet other artists. And then they will also maybe can introduce you in the, you know, just, yes. uh, so that is probably, and so the, for example, last summer for the first time I went to the festival mm -hmm. where they do portfolio review, yes. reviews, and uh, that is a really good way of meeting a lot of people yes. Yes. because it's difficult to just approach galleries. I think they will be very defensive. Maybe I would be defensive too if somebody out of the blue would write to me, you know, asking for, you know, to work together or something. So, but if you go to these portfolio reviews, it's, uh, you really get to know people and they are in a very good disposition and they don't need, you don't need to work. I think it, um, it takes a, long, a lot of time uh, between when you know a gallerist and when you start working with them. This, I think my experience was quite, <laughs> was quite uh, unique with the yeah. Hong Kong gallery. Mm -hmm. and because they found everything done and they said, okay, let's just, they just, you know. Yes, yes. Uh, just, just do the exhibition. So you basically uh, reserve some kind of budget for prints and for rent in the space. Like in the very beginning. Yes, yes. yes but you're going to do that. Yeah, okay. And as for um, portfolio reviews, uh, some galleries, they even don't read their emails at all. They just select the people 
who they see during portfolio reviews because they like, okay, we're very busy. We dedicate our time during this week of portfolio reviews, for example, to select the artist. And that's, and they have already the personal connection there. So this is how they do it. And I heard that from different artists as well as uh, Brooke Shade. And also she talks about that. So this is how the gallery, some, some of the galleries, this is how they work. It's, much easier to right away create a personal connection than just communicate with someone. Yes. In some I think personal connection, yeah, it's how it works. And I, what I hear, yes, it's uh, uh, also through their artists. So they ask, because of course they might like a lot of art that they see, but if they have no relationship with you and it's just via email, it's difficult for them even to remember about you when there is the opportunity, maybe a group show where your work would fit, unless you write to them, you know, like every month, I think it's difficult. But mm -hmm. I heard many galleries, they, they, they ask their artists, oh, do you know some good artists that, mm -hmm. you know, that, that this kind of, and, um, yeah. So yeah, to be involved and social and do portfolio reviews that I found was very interesting. I was not there, I mean, ga gallery, uh, but it was more about having feedback. But then you understand a little bit how it works and, it, and you can keep those connections, you know, so it's, uh, it was really useful. This is why I'm going to Paris Photo in this November. It's like ah. photography, art fair in Paris. So maybe you can join <laughs> because it's... Uh, yeah, I wish, I wish. It's in November. Mm -hmm. Yes, in the November. And which photography festival did you go to? Was it in Italy? I went to uh, the one in Arles in France. Mm. Oh, the, yes. As a festival is, I think probably is the biggest one. Yes. And it's uh, like quite established this year. They were celebrating 50 years. Mm -hmm. so, and it was my first festival. I went to a lot of fairs. I also joined, I mean, as an academy because the gallery joined some fairs, so we did. Another thing that I did before, uh, because it was already planned, is, uh, mm -hmm. is the other affair. Mm -hmm. The other affair is the fair organized by Sachi Art online yeah. platform. Mm -hmm. So I signed up for that before I had the gallery. Mm -hmm. And it was already planned, so I went anyway. And it was really nice. It was really nice. You, it's really nice to have the contact with the people. Then I had to stop, because of course, when you are represented, it's difficult. You cannot do fairs by yourself, this kind mm -hmm. of fairs. But those, mm -hmm. like the other affair is fair that it's uh, for independent art artists mm -hmm. so it's some another thing that you can do and uh was it beneficial actually uh because it's quite expensive to take part in that i cover i just covered the cost mm -hmm. okay so okay. and it was but, not uh, a little cost because yes. i didn't find the booth very expensive mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, because i really had a very very small space mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and most of the artists are very small spaces. Uh, of course, yeah. Mm -hmm. But for me, it was more the traveling and the shipping cost. It, uh, yeah, for my gallery paid for them. So okay. it, was, it was easier. But the traveling, that was more uh, more expensive. Mm -hmm. But it's okay. I mean, uh, I really wanted to do it. So I said, okay, let's this year I will invest in this and see how it goes. I don't think it's something that you can always do um, unless you have a return. Mm -hmm. But for me, it paid, and um, many artists were selling well. Mm -hmm. And where was it? Because I think that, that one was in London. Okay. I'm also thinking about taking part in the art, other art fair. So I'm mm. really, really... There are, now there are a lot, many mm -hmm. locations. Yes. Before, I think it was only London and somewhere else in the UK. Mm -hmm. But now it's, yeah, in, there is in Australia, in, in the US, New York. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Uh, so, did you go to portfolio reviews in Arl, actually? Yes, I signed up. You have to sign up and it's like 20 mm -hmm. minutes, very quick. I know. This year was the only year that I didn't go and I went the previous two years. So Where in Arl? Yes, in Arl. Ah, okay. Yes. And you never did the portfolio reviews? I did, yes, I did. Ah, okay. Uh, yes, it's really... How was it? Oh, well, it was, for me, I also was kind of like mostly sharing on Instagram and doing personal projects. And when I went there, I realized that there is a whole new world. Yes. So many people, they don't know anything about Instagram. They're like, what is that? <laughs> that was three years ago. Oh, and yeah, it was very refreshing. And I got so many new ideas and I understood that, okay, the, this is just <laughs> very different from what I used to do. So yeah, it, it is very beneficial. And I got a lot of feedback about my work and I got guidelines on how and where I should progress so that I become a better artist also commercially. So mm. yeah.
I think for you it's a bit different because you are already quite established and you already understand many things. No. You're like completely clueless about the whole thing. No, but also for me it was the first experience and when I got there and I saw all the, um, the other photographers, they were carrying all these big prints and uh, with uh, maybe white gloves and they had all uh, for me I was with my very small prints and in a, you know like I think yeah I will go next time I will uh, I I would have learned mm -hmm. this, well these things, but you need big prints but yeah some people different people just bring different materials whatever they have there are no guidelines but I prefer no, to no but I thought the other were very professional and I thought I mean I enjoy normally when I work with my gallery or when I do things I think I'm very professional but then for these portfolio reviews I was there with you know very it was a little bit messy with small prints and I had uh, you know catalogs and <laughs> so mm -hmm. that was uh, interesting but they were oh, I mean the the attitude of the um, reviewers were so nice they yes. were there just to help you so it, it didn't matter and I had good meetings that yeah that, that's really really great to hear and yeah so did you get any feedback on your work yes 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 no no I got mm -hmm. a lot of feedbacks I think it was well received especially I presented two series so because mm -hmm. I have four series totally yeah mm -hmm. the, my first like more like Instagram beginning of Instagram uh, mm -hmm. work that I didn't even show and then I had stillness that I didn't show just I had it there for people because with the couple of them we also met after mm -hmm. like it, 20 minutes were too little so we met uh, after and I showed them you know also mm -hmm. my previous mm -hmm. and then uh, no it was really nice I think that it was all well received and they gave me they gave me suggestions how to present the work mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, they told me to be more confident, <laughs> which helped. Of course. But, uh, yeah. It's uh, that's nice. There are so many people from photography schools. They're coming there because their schools are directing, like, go to the photography festival. And when you're an independent photographer, that you worked at home or, like, in your town all by yourself, you never learned then of course sometimes you feel very unprofessional there and they're all like they had taught those white gloves to have everything nicely organized at schools as well and they also felt really kind of stupid when i came there for the first time <laughs> yeah oh no i don't know not not stupid but uh, it's the first time and i think they are uh, they're fun with that but you know yeah. then you learn and you do it better I actually had a question which will take our conversation in a bit different direction. We don't have that much time left, like 10 minutes. But um, uh, your new project is about how technology influences our life. What do you think uh, about social media for creatives? Are they good or bad? Because so many people, when they message me and say like, oh, we're not getting any likes, or like they always get worried about the number of followers, and they're like, oh, but they're, we're comparing ourselves and this drains our creative energy. What's your take on that? For me, they are good as they give you a platform to show your work. That is mm -hmm. the most important thing for uh, a photographer, for an artist, for so it's really a great opportunity but the way I mean if you leave it in a it depends on the way you approach it for me it was never a problem of course I would like my picture to be seen by most people as possible but I don't really care if it's the like if people like it or they don't like it even if they really don't like it it kind of makes me smile mm. you know, I don't you know I should do more like that I think I it for me it's a little social media I leave it a little bit as a game if you leave it as a marketing thing and uh, you get very stressed with the likes and share or maybe you do things because you think that people would like them I think that would really be, be negative because mm -hmm. it would take out you know take away from your honesty and uh, you know your uh, spontaneity mm -hmm. to, yeah that's to your... brilliant for me even at the portfolio reviews if some it happened that one reviewer told me, you know, maybe you should do your aesthetic is too is too beautiful in a way that maybe it can take away from the topic that you want to talk about. And for me, it's <laughs> for me. It's first. I think that if there is some layer to what you do, it does. If there is no layer, if it's only aesthetics, then of course it's something superficial and it's not. It's not relevant. It's mm -hmm. not. 
I mean, it can be decorative, but it's not like meaningful. Yeah. But if there are layers, it's also good to have forms and contents. You don't need, you don't need to. So for me, that made me think that now I want to do something more, you know, like more on aesthetics. Uh, for yeah, for me, it's a little bit like a challenge. I take this a little bit, and social media is the same. I don't. It's nice to have good. It's very nice to have good comments and to have people involved. But so if it's good, it's very good. But if it's bad, it's not uh, something that I will that will affect me. Yeah, so I feel very free with photography. That is something very unusual for me because I'm usually a bit conscious of what other people think but with photography I'm very like I don't so if you leave it like that I think it's all good mm -hmm. if you yeah. are uh, you know if you get affected by other what you know the mechanism the algorithm uh, this then uh, maybe yes your work will be affected in a negative way mm -hmm. I totally agree and that's a brilliant way to approach the whole thing because well who cares what other people think actually if they think that they like something negative then it's well okay you can go your way and I'm going my way so yeah, yeah that's, with this kind of creative work I think is that you need to be happy about what you do exactly. uh, so for me I don't think I am better than somebody else or in a scale from one to ten I am eight or nine there is no this such thing mm -hmm. so I just need to be happy about what I do and to even if it's not an important thing it doesn't matter mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, even if it's not relevant to others, it doesn't matter. So you are not seeking advice from others. Uh, yes, on... definitely. And we, we have some positive feedback from, <laughs> from the audience. Yes, I also admire <laughs> everything that Valentina says here. I had one question from... Hux, he's also, he's in Malaysia, Huxterized, you probably oh, know. Oh, yes, probably. it's a friend. I, we... Yes, yes. <laughs> he asked me about the hashtag projects that you did on Instagram. The um, ah. Yes, and before those, I would like to ask you, why are you not so active anymore? Okay. Them, and uh, if you tried any other platforms besides that? Okay, so no, these, I haven't tried other platforms. I think I signed up in others just to take my name or like, mm -hmm, I think on mm -hmm. Twitter, maybe, but it's not, uh, I haven't tried other platforms. For the hashtag, yes, it was as usual, more like a playful thing. I was shooting people in, uh, in um, you know, limited by shapes, in shape. So I, 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 I created this hashtag that is called uh, getting people in shape and, uh, <laughs> and other people were joining. And it was very fun. I, now I'm not really doing that kind of work anymore. And also I'm not really very engaged with Instagram, even though I always check, but it's more in a passive mm -hmm. way. So one reason is that I am working on a series. Before I was taking pictures very, very often and then I was posting it by, one by one. Mm -hmm. Now it's more uh, projects. So I, I work for months on a project and mm -hmm. then I publish it all together. So mm -hmm. then maybe I publish six pictures, eight, then 10 pictures in uh, 10 days. Mm -hmm. And then for other, so I know it's not uh, working. <laughs> it's not, it doesn't work for Instagram work like that but Instagram is not my priority right now so mm -hmm. it's uh, but I know because now I mean I'm losing so many followers every time it's uh, but it's fine and then uh, the other thing is that uh, I don't take those kind of pictures anymore because they are not so exciting like they were at the beginning at the beginning it, it was new mm -hmm. and uh, not many people were doing that kind of photography now you are always exposed mm -hmm. to similar pictures to all kind of pictures so if i don't have something that you know it's uh, excites me i don't really shoot it or post it mm -hmm. and that was a i think a nice project and the submissions not the submission but the hashtag pictures from other instagrammers were also very fun but now it's not as much fun and uh, and it's a little bit the same not only for those kind of pictures but also for many kinds of pictures mm -hmm. so that's why i'm a little bit less active and also now i'm not act because i'm not really updated with all the stories and this live you know things so i think if i would do that for marketing i should really you know focus on that and learn how to do these things and mm -hmm. uh, i'm not 
Okay, I see. But we have like one, maybe two minutes okay. left. <laughs> so I want to ask you the final question. I think you already replied a little bit, but anyway, uh, what makes a great work of art, in your opinion? Mm -hmm. oh, that's a difficult one. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it's uh, more about the art. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the mind of the artist. If you can see, you know, something, if you can, from the work of art, you can um, and for me it's either something that will make you feel something new surprised weird or something that you don't even know how to you know how to call it and then intrigues me because i think was he talk was he, was he thinking you know <laughs> or maybe something like creative that i find it you know like a brilliant idea it's or about the process. I like when, for example, there are, there are a lot of artists that use photography in a very... I would love to do that, but, you know, I haven't experimented mm -hmm. with that yet. To use other ways to mm -hmm. make images. Mm -hmm. So the process is also something that, uh, for me, makes a great work of art. And sometimes you see one work of art and you don't get it. And then you see other works of art from the same artist. And all together, they, they really make sense. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. this is also something that to me is important I and mean, it can be important mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's that's a great answer thank you so much for <laughs> thank you being <laughs> with me today and i think you shared so much brilliant advice and so many extremely helpful thoughts i've thank been doing such a pleasure i really hope we maybe do it again because i I have like so many questions left. I touched on them. So it was a pleasure. <laughs> it was great to meet you. Thank you, Dasha. Yes, bye now. This wraps the episode up. Thanks so much for listening. All the names and resources that we mentioned can be found in the show notes to this episode. Go to dashapears-art.com slash podcast. If you like this podcast, please go to your podcast app and hit like. It helps more people benefit from the content I'm putting out there. Now, until next time, take care, guys.